most people show their emotion right on their face. So if you can watch the kind of emotions that you're showing to other people, again, you can avoid misunderstanding, miscommunication. Okay, so that's the end of my general cues. So for a, I guess, change of topic, what was the farthest Spain had made it previously at the World Cup? in regards to the World Cup though. Why did I put a World Cup question in? Well, Manuel and I would usually watch the matches in the morning because that's when it would come when we were at home. But we came to India and the first night that we were in Melbourne was the finals. And I was rooting for Spain and Manu was rooting for Netherlands. And the match started I think at 11 and I was up until 3.30 watching everything until it was over. So we're both rooting for our own teams and saying, go Spain, go Spain. And Manu was getting really frustrated, and as soon as Spain scored, Manu said, this is useless. And he went upstairs, he was really, really angry that the team that he wanted to win lost. But unfortunately, he's asleep right now, or else I could make him feel a little bit worse about Netherlands losing. So, back to the topic. When you're giving good news to a patient, what do you do? First thing. Easiest thing, smile. Oftentimes people forget to do it, but it's such a simple thing. Just smile at them. Say it with confidence. Say it knowing what you know. Use encouraging words so that they know that it's a good thing. And allow the patient to respond to your words. Not necessarily saying something like, thank you doctor, or is this what it is doctor, but just Wait for their face to change to a positive thing. Wait for them to smile, or wait for them to show that look of relief on their face. But bearing good news is an easy thing. What's a little bit more difficult? Bearing bad news. In this case, don't smile unnecessarily. Sometimes people smile when they're nervous. It's, it's a crutch. It's something people lean back on. But if you smile unnecessarily, people might get the wrong idea. And it can be very, very misleading. <coughs> to them, as though it's not as grave, as grave of a situation as it is. Make eye contact and be empathetic. Eye contact, as I said before, is one of the crucial aspects of communication and of a relationship. When you know somebody or you're close to somebody, you tend to make eye contact a little bit more. And as a doctor, you're somebody that these patients trust a lot. They're putting their lives into your hands, and you have that duty. And don't try to downplay the situation by using more like, nicer words, making it sound better. Because sometimes, again, it can be very misleading and it can give them false hope that the situation might get better. But sometimes they need to know how important and how grave and serious the situation is for them to act accordingly and to take the necessary steps. And if the situation permits, Every situation is different, every situation is unique, and there will be situations where you can be a little hopeful, where you can give them that little hope that there is this chance of survival or chance of things getting better. And of course, for us it's culturally appropriate behavior. Every culture has different cues, different stigmas. There are different things that are social faux pas. There are things that you can and cannot do. There will be things that you can do in the United States that isn't acceptable here. There will be things that you can do here that won't be acceptable in the United States. It all changes based on culture. And if you can take, in that, take into account these cultural differences, you can make a big difference. And probably the hardest thing is the bearer of loss. And that's one thing that's very difficult for anybody who has a conscience. And First of all, just telling the 
patient that you understand their pain and you show that in your actions and you show that in their face can make a huge difference. And the thing is, you all know what that kind of pain is. As doctors, you will always see bad situations, you'll always see loss. So it's not that you don't understand, but sometimes you don't make it known to the patient that you do understand. And if you can just convey to them the emotions that you're feeling inside, outside, they can feel like they have somebody to lean on and that there's somebody else who understands the situation that they're in. Be truthful and direct. Tell it to them as it is. But at the same time, don't make it unemotional, don't be stoic, don't be indifferent to the situation. A lot of times you won't be indifferent, but it might seem like you are indifferent. Like what's on the outside reflect what's on the inside. Sometimes the intent and what you do don't match up. I'm sure all of you have heard the phrase, the ends justify the means. What happens in the end justifies the way that you went about it. But a lot of times when it comes to the medical field, intent is very, very important. What you mean is extremely important because it's the way that you take action to solve certain problems. But at the same time, you have to look at the ends as well. What do you get at the, as the end result? And the most important thing is to show that you understand. And if they are available, offer them access to support groups in the community, in the hospital, anything that you know of where they can find other people to lean on, other people to relate to. My dad has one called Sack Kid Diabetes, and the Sacramento parents of, with children who have diabetes come onto this online support group and they post messages of any problems that they have, any good things that they've been experiencing with their children and their diabetes, and managing their diabetes. And a lot of parents are willing to offer the help that they've uh, offer the help that they've received in the past to new patients, as well as just tell them the experiences that they've had so that these parents can feel a little bit better. Okay, again, before going to the next topic. End up. Okay, how much of the world's currency does India hold in its treasuries? 